I welcome Roberto Roman, Associated Professor at the Faculty of Physics and Mathematics, um, and Mathematical Science at the University of Chile. And you are board member of ISINS. You came across the ocean to visit this European conference. What are your impressions? It's been a very wonderful morning. Uh, I, 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 I assisted to the plenary session, sessions and uh, oral sessions. and. Uh, The, the things I already heard and the new conferences I plan to attend uh, means it's going to be a very productive week. Excellent. Chile, I think, is a very prospering future market in photovoltaics. Uh, what are the drivers in your country? It's, uh, I think, first of all, we need to move from fossil fuels to renewable energy, of which we have a lot, especially solar energy. And this has been understood after many, many years of work. Today, solar electricity accounts for over a thousand megawatts of, uh, of power, and it's going up online faster. R renewable energy already accounts for over 20% of total electric electrical production, and uh, in, 20, uh, in 2006, it was less than, than 10%. So it's going up quite quickly. And there's also lots of opportunity in other sectors in process heat and so forth. So you, here in this conference, uh, the building sector and industry, as you said, are the focus points. So you see also renewable heat as a chance for Chile? Yes, we already have uh, quite a few projects. One of the biggest ones is in uh, Minera Gaviera Mistral. It was designed by Energia Jaima and it provides uh, about 80% of the heat uh, for electric winning copper, which is a pr total production of about 400,000 tons a year uh, from solar energy. And that's been in operation for over three years now. And it's a project I've been involved in as a consultant for Covelco with the energy center at the University of Chile. I think it's the largest operating plant within solar heating and cooling worldwide. It's a very case study. Um, so are there other mines having interest in using solar heat in Chile? Yes, they are. But they, at the moment, they're sort of holding back because uh, since the price of copper have gone, has gone down, they, they, they're not as open to investment as they are, even though the investment would be done by the company, but they don't want to sign long-term contracts. So this whole thing is being reviewed so to see how we can lower the cost of solar thermal heat. And uh, it's possible. It's possible to lower it to, to cost that will be truly competitive, even with the low price of oil and other fossil fuels. So you supported ISIS as board member, and you have been vice president of membership affairs. What is your special for ISIS in your region? How can ISIS support your processes in Chile and elsewhere? I think in many ways. Uh, first of all, with the contacts. We, through ISIS, I've met uh, many wonderful people, and uh, the contacts has helped me immeasurably to promote the use of solar in Chile. As you know, ISIS is the leading um, society as regards solar energy worldwide. I mean, many, almost all the great pioneers have been ISIS members since its founding, and I think it's 1954. I've been a member for quite a few years now. And uh, always I find that it's easy to network and it's easy to find the uh, people that help you uh, to promote your ideas and uh, give you good, I good ideas also. Okay, so I wish you an excellent conference. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. Thank you.